We light this candle as a sign of the coming light of Christ. Advent means coming. We are preparing ourselves for these days when the nations shall beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Nation shall not lift up a sword against nation, neither shall they learn war any more. The wolf shall dwell with the lamb, the leopard shall lie with the kid, the calf and the lion and the fatling together, and a little child shall lead them. The wilderness and the dry land shall be glad. The desert shall rejoice and blossom. Like the crocus, it shall blossom abundantly and rejoice with joy and singing. The Lord will give you a sign. Look, the young woman is with child. And shall bear a son, and shall name him Emmanuel. God is with us. Dear friends, dear sisters and brothers in Christ, welcome to Rutgers Presbyterian Church Christmas Eve service of nine lessons, carols, and also candlelighting ceremony at the end. This is a virtual worship, so be patient with anything the technology can throw at us. There are problems now and then. This is not a show, this is a worship. And we are hopeful that it will be really pleasing to our Lord and to our upbuilding and our faith. Uh, per definitionen, by definition, this will be the best virtual Christmas Eve service ever because it's our first. And uh, if you want to join us later for lighting candles, prepare a candle uh, during the service. Now, at Rutgers, we like the atmosphere and the tradition of the Festival of Lessons and Carols. Yet, in our progressive church, we cannot deny certain misgivings, especially about the selection of those traditional biblical lessons, which indulge in outdated, conservative, and somehow exclusivistic theology. Traditional biblical lessons, especially those from the Hebrew Bible, are torn out of their context and twisted beyond recognition to fit the superstitious dogmatic mold. Thus, a circle of Rutgers church, church clergy dedicated uh, some time ago to form and shape our own selection of nine lessons, which we hope are truer to biblical theology and more appropriate for our celebration 
of Christmas. And so, dear beloved in Christ, let it be our care and delight to hear with fresh ears the treasured message of prophets and apostles in new living translation. Let us read and mark in Holy Scripture the loving desire of God from the first days of creation unto the glorious hope brought to the world's ostracized, underprivileged, and oppressed by Jesus the Christ. But first, let us pray for the needs of the whole world, for peace on earth and goodwill among all races, peoples, nations, and religions, for unity among the people of God, and especially in this, our own community of faith. And because they are especially close to God's heart, let us remember and renew our commitment to the poor and helpless, the cold, the hungry, and the oppressed, the refugees of wars and religious hatred, the sick and those who mourn, the lonely and the unloved, the aged and the little children. Lastly, let us remember before God all those who rejoice with us, but upon another shore and in a greater light, that multitude which no one can number, whose hope was in the divine peace and justice, with whom in the divine love we are united forevermore. These prayers and these praises let us humbly offer up to the throne of heaven in the words which Christ himself have taught us. Eternal spirit, earth maker, pain bearer, life giver, source of all that is and that shall be, father and mother of us all, loving God in whom is heaven. May the hallowing of your name echo throughout the universe. May the way of your justice be followed by the peoples of the world. May your heavenly will be done by all created beings. And may your commonwealth of peace and freedom sustain our hope and come on earth. With the bread we need for today, feed us. In the hurts we absorb from one another, forgive us. In times of temptation and test, strengthen us. From trials that are too great to endure, spare us. From the grip of all that is evil, free us. For you reign in the glory and the power that is love now and forever. Amen. We read now the creation story from the Gospel of John about the universe being created in and through the Logos, divine purpose of love and light. First, there was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. It was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through the Word, and without it, not a thing came to be. The life itself came into being in the word, and this life was the light of peoples, and this light shines in the darkness, and the darkness could not grasp it.
our second lesson, Prophet Hosea speaks about a covenant of love between God and God's people. A covenant of love anchored in righteousness and justice. A covenant encompassing animals and plants and sealed in peace and abundance for everyone. On that day, I will make a covenant with the wild animals, the birds of the air, and the creeping things of the ground, and I will abolish the bow, the sword, and war from the land, and I will make you rest in safety. And I will take you for my wife forever. I will take you for my wife in righteousness and in justice, in steadfast love and in mercy. I will take you for my wife in faithfulness, and you shall know the Lord. On that day I will answer, says the Lord. I will answer the heavens, and they shall answer the earth. And the earth shall answer the grain, the wine, and the oil. And they shall answer Jezreel, which means God plants. And I will sow them for myself in the land. And I will show love to those called not loved. And to those called not my people, I will say, You are my people. And they will say, You are our God. lesson, Prophet Isaiah presents us a radical image of God as a loving mother. All the dispossessed, exiled, and depressed are powerfully assured that they remain in the center of divine love and attention, just like a newborn baby with her mom. Can a mother forget her nursing child? Can she feel no love for the child she has born? But even if that were possible, I would not forget you. See, I have written your name in the palms of my hand. Always in my mind is a picture of Jerusalem. Soon your descendants will come back, and all who are trying to destroy you will go away.
lesson, Prophet Amos reminds people that God is not interested in their religious rituals, holidays, and celebration, and prefers justice and righteousness in everyday living. True justice and righteousness are unstoppable and represent the true essence of life. Do what is good and run from evil so that you may live. Then the Lord God of hosts will be your helper, just as you have claimed. Hate evil and love what is good. Turn your courts into true halls of justice. Perhaps even the Lord God of hosts will have mercy on the remnant of God's people. I hate all your show and pretense, the hypocrisy of your religious festivals and solemn assemblies. I will not accept your burnt offerings and grain offerings. I won't even notice your choice peace offerings. Away with your noisy hymns of praise. I will not listen to the music of your harps. Instead, I want to see a mighty flood of justice and the endless river of righteous living. Those feeling lonely and abandoned in the deserts of their lives should listen to the prophet Isaiah and his song of blooming desert and path through inhospitable perplexities of life. The desert and the dry land will be glad. The wilderness will rejoice and blossom like the crocus. They will burst into bloom and rejoice with joy and singing. They will receive the glory of Lebanon, the splendor of Carmel and Sharon. They will see the Lord's glory, the splendor of our God. Strengthen the weak hands and support the unsteady knees. Say to those who are panicking, be strong and don't fear. Here's your God coming with vengeance. With divine retribution, God will come to save you. Then the eyes of the blind will be opened and the ears of the deaf will be cleared. Then the lame will leap like the deer and the tongue of the speechless will sing. Waters will spring up in the desert and streams in the wilderness. The burning sand will become a pool and the thirsty ground fountains of water, the jackal's habitat a pasture, 
Dry glass, grasslands will become reeds and rushes. A highway will be there. It will be called the Holy Way. The unclean won't travel on it, but it will be for those walking on that way. Even fools won't get lost on it. No lion will be there and no predator will go up on it. None of these will be there. Only the redeemed will walk on it. The Lord's ransom ones will return and enter Zion with singing, with everlasting joy upon their heads. Happiness and joy will overwhelm them. Grief and groaning will flee away. to the message of our sixth lesson in which prophet Micah reminds us of our need to learn how to settle differences in a peaceful manner. Micah's message is especially powerful for it highlights a divine desire for weapons turned into tools of substance and warmongering abandoned for sustainable living. And in the days to come the mountain of the Lord's house will be the highest of the mountains it will be lifted above the hills, and peoples will stream to it. Many nations will go and say, Come, let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of Jacob's God, so that God may teach us proper ways, and we may walk in God's paths. Then instruction will come from Zion, 
and the Lord's word from Jerusalem. God will judge between the nations and settle disputes of mighty nations far away. They will beat their swords into plows and their spears into pruning tools. Nation will not take up sword against nation. They will no longer learn how to make war. All will sit underneath their own grapevines, underneath their own fig trees. There will be no one to terrify them, for the mouth of the Lord of, God, of hosts has spoken. possible to overstate the theological and prophetic importance of Magnificat. At the legendary moment of Jesus's conception, the evangelist Luke fuses together into this song the Hebrew, Hebrew prophets with the message of the one yet unborn. Let us listen to Mary's powerful song. My soul 
glorifies you, my Lord, and my spirit rejoices in you, my God and Savior. You took notice of me, your lowly servant girl. Indeed, from now on, all generations will call me blessed, for you have done great things to me. Your name is holy indeed. From generation to generation, you extend mercy to your faithful people. You do tremendous things by your power, dispersing the proud together with their conceit, bringing down the rulers from their lofty thrones, lifting up the dejected in their place, feeding the hungry with all good things, throwing out the rich, empty-handed, coming to help your servant people, remembering your promise of mercy love, those promises you made to our ancestors of old, to Abraham and Sarah and all their children of every time. the author of the first epistle of John teaches us the essentials of divine love and its eternal as well as daily ramifications. God is love and all who live in love live in God and God lives in them. And as we live in God, our love grows more perfect. So we will not be afraid on the day of judgment but we can face God with confidence because we live like Jesus here in this world. Such love has no fear because perfect love expels all fear. If we are afraid, it is for fear of punishment. And this shows that we have not fully experienced God's perfect love. We love each other because God loved us first. If someone says, I love God, but hates a Christian brother or sister, that person is a liar. For if we don't love people we can see, how can we love God whom we cannot see? And God has given us this command. Those who love God must also love their Christian brothers and sisters.
Our final lesson is from the book of Revelation, foreseeing the glory, splendor, and peace of the new city of God and the end of all religion, because God will ultimately, will be intimately known and present with all and in all. I didn't see a temple in the city because its temple is the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb. The city doesn't need the sun or the moon to shine on it because God's glory is its light and its lamp is the Lamb. The nations will walk by its light and the kings of the earth will bring their glory into it. Its gates will never be shut by day and there will be no night there. They will bring the glory and the honor of the nations into it.
Each year on Christmas Eve, we turn our eyes to Bethlehem and celebrate the wondrous gift of Jesus Christ into our world and into our lives. By giving to the Christmas joy offering, we honor this gift by providing assistance to current and retired church workers in their time of need and developing our future leaders at Presbyterian related racial ethnic schools and colleges. You may send a check to Rutgers Church, 236 West 73rd Street, New York, New York, 10023. And please note the word joy on your check. Or you may download the Give Plus app on your phone and search using 10023 and indicate joy. Thank you.
let us pray. God of wonder, love, and grace, take these gifts we bring and use them for the work of your church in this world. Help us spread the joy of your love. Amen. And now, dear friends, we will proceed with uh, lighting the last candle of our Advent wreath. So prepare your white or fifth candle. And we will have candle lighting ceremony, which will be followed by the hymn 122 Silent Night. We were looking into a possibility to replicate what we do in a church and having a view of all of you while we are singing it. But unfortunately, it is not that easy on Zoom. So you will have the text on screen. And afterwards, right before the benediction, we will have and a gallery view for a moment and then final benediction. So now we will have the liturgy of lighting the Christ candle. The people who have walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. Let us walk in the light of the Lord.
for a moment we can now share light be lit at our homes with one another and as we heard our liturgist telling us so let us walk in the light of christ And dear friends, if you want to stay a little longer to greet each other with message of Christmas, stay for a fellowship time after worship. And now let us hear and appropriate the Lord's blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord smile on you and be gracious to you. The Lord shower you with favor and give you peace. Hallelujah. Amen. Peace, everyone.